You have parents out there in order to survive. Look at what it costs to rent a place. Look what it costs to, you know, for the utilities. It's all about a big money grab. So the parents, both parents have to work. And they're working at jobs that, that doesn't pay them what they need to live. So they're scrambling. Sometimes they have to do two jobs. That's for those who don't give up. And it's just frustrating. It's frustrating. So they're not with their children. If this government is so damn sure that, you know, that they're, they want to do something about this situation, pay the mothers to stay home. Pay them. Because it is a full-time job. Or pay the father. Then you won't have the problem with these children in the streets. But what we got now is government telling us how we should raise our children, the ways, the do's and the don'ts, and it's not getting done. So there's a lot of reasons why we're in the situation we're in, and none of them are good. And we don't have a very bright perspective of looking upon things for the future. If society really wants to clear up the drug problem, if they really want to do all of these things, then they better sit down and take a hard look at it. And that it's not just an eternal issue. You're, it's not going to go away by ignoring it. It's only going to get worse. And what is safety and comfort for you right now is not going to be safety and comfort for you for the future. Because gangs are getting stronger, drugs are more, children, there's no family unit anymore. So you buy a place in the suburbs and you think you're going to be safe, forget it. There is no safe place. The only safe place is dealing with the situation straight up, straight on, and understand what you're dealing with. We can't run from it anymore. And if we continue to run as a society from what's taken place, it's just going to get a whole lot worse. When we come into this world, and I've learned this because I've... I've gone back to, to my traditional and cultural ways, you know, the, the way of the pipe. And that's what turned my life around. At 32 years old, you know, I took a knife in the chest twice after many years of violence and, and drugs and alcohol and abuse. And I turned my life around and the elders helped me do that, that way of the pipe. And... When you come into this world, the Creator, the only guarantee He can give you is love. That's the gift they give you. And you have choices of how you give that love. And to accept, your journey in life is to make mistakes, to learn from those mistakes, and to grow from those mistakes, so that you make less mistakes. But with it comes all the other teachings of how to treat each other, how to treat people. But what is the solution? The solution is love. If we start looking at the problem and, and recognize what did these children, whether you go back three, four, ten generations, what, what were they lacking? They were lacking the basics of love. Lacking the basics of tools of the difference between right and wrong, of having security. What every child should have is security and a place where they can be children. And most of these people haven't even been children yet. They're 40, 50 years old, and when you work with them, you start working with their children, and the parents are so busy trying to gobble up that, that attention and that love that even then the children don't have time for it. So that's what we have to go back to. A little consideration for one another and most of all for those children. As I say, pay the mothers or pay the fathers to be at home. We've got a serious problem with drugs. If we look at why people take drugs, you know, why did I take drugs? Why did I take alcohol? To stop being me. I didn't like me. 
And if I can be given the opportunity to start loving me, then I can, I can be a human being. But they don't, we don't get many opportunities for that. And we have to go back to what we feel. Let's just take our Aboriginal for ex people for example. Is what we are learning, our way of life is acceptance from the Creator. It's not analyzing and, and judging. The cultural way of Aboriginal people is to accept that everything around us is here for a purpose. And it's our way of life. And what happens is that when we start losing who we are, we become very confused. So what we need to do is start with these children. Don't think it's going to go away in one or two generations. It took us ten generations to get into the problem we are. So it's probably, if it takes us ten generations, we, the only good thing about it is every year it's going to, we're going to see better results. So what we need to do is to start with the little ones. Start with the children. Where we can work with the parents, let's work with the parents. But let's start giving them what they need to live. Not to survive, but to live in this society. To live life and appreciate it. To be happy with who they are. The problem is simple. But do you have the heart and the patience to put the energy into fixing it? Is there a will by government? And yes, there's a cost to it. Mm -hmm. But it's plain and simple. If you, if the government really wants to resolve this problem, it's fixable. If society really wants to fix this problem, it's fixable. But it takes a little love and consideration a little time and effort, instead of blaming and deflecting who's, who's at fault. It makes no difference who is at fault. This is the situation we're in, and let's be prepared to try and do something about it. When we talk about reclaiming the Aboriginal family, let's face it, we never lost it. Aboriginal culture is Mother Earth. And as long as Mother Earth exists, we have a culture. And like our mother, she provides us with everything we need. Medicine, everything to make us healthy. So to reclaim is to go back and start being able to be us again. To start being ourselves. And to give families the opportunity to be them. If it takes taking them out into a camp setting for two weeks or for a month at a time for them to get off everything and go through what you know the 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 drying out time before their mind starts realizing and 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 being able to to start doing things in a positive way let's be prepared to do that. Because the, the cost is far cheaper than taking four or five children from that family and putting them into foster care for 20 years and then usually into the jail system. But, like I say, everything has a cure. Everything can be, can be fixed. That family can be taken to a place and worked with and that structure be, be put back into place and then to give them the opportunity to be able to start again. Because if you can't be a family unit, then you need to look at what was lacking in your life. What was lacking that, that took away from you? In our case was our culture and by that I mean our language our ceremonial ways, all these things were taken from Aboriginal people. For 150 years, we weren't allowed to be who we were. And we have a society that says, oh, you Indians get everything. Well, for 150 years, you took everything. Now, 
even the right to work. We weren't allowed to work. And if we, if we went to work, we had to stop being an Indian. What little land base we had, what little home we had, we had to give up if we went out and worked in the white man's world. You know, take a look at history. To know where you're coming from is to know, to where you're going is to know where you come from. And there is a history of all of that. But society out there doesn't want to look too deeply at our problem. Everybody's so busy out there trying to get rich having two car garage and a fancy house. But you know what? 25 years ago those streets were full of Aboriginal people. Now I go down there and 50% of those are non-Aboriginal kids. And it's happening to them. We went through it. We're starting to come out of it. But the non-Aboriginal people are just starting to go through it. And I can guarantee you, if we are not prepared to address this problem straight up of family, of the situation, what you think is safe now and secure is not going to be there five years from now. Like I say, these gangs are getting tougher. I came through gangs. I know why I went into a gang, because I didn't have a family. I didn't have somebody who loved me, but the gang loved me. They gave me that security that I could never get in all these foster homes and in all these things that social services was supposed to provide me for. What they paid these people to provide me with. I found that in gangs. And I did a lot of damage and I hurt a lot of people. And it wasn't until the elders who took me and taught me how to love again that I'm here today. I'm alive and I'm trying to help fix the problem.